In the last few reviews I've done on FDM 3D printers, one of the most common questions that I've gotten is, how does this printer compare to the Ender 3 V2? And with how popular the original Ender 3 was, how much I've covered it on this channel in terms of my experience with it and different upgrades, it's no wonder that people would wanna know about the second version of it. And up until recently, I haven't had much to say about this because I personally don't like commenting on machines that I haven't actually had hands-on experience with and tested out myself. Well, for those of you that have been patiently waiting, I am excited to let you know that I did get an Ender 3 V2 in and have had some time to play around with it, and that is what today's video is going to be all about. So in today's video, we are going to cover the specs of the Ender 3 V2. We're going to go over what the assembly and setup looks like and what my overall experience and print quality has looked like coming off of this machine. We're also going to do a little bit of talking about how this compares to some of the other machines that I have recently covered on this channel. There's quite a bit to get through, so without further ado, let's get right into today's video. In a similar order to like we normally do, let's first cover the technical specs of the Ender 3 V2. Similar to the original Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro, this has the exact same build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. It's using the same kind of black aluminum extrusions and honestly, if you put them side by side, they look very, very similar to each other. The build surface on the V2 is described as a carborundum glass plate, which appears to be a glass ultra base style bed. Although I do prefer a really good flex plate system over this kind of bed, I would consider this an upgrade over the original Ender 3's kind of knockoff build tech that comes on the aluminum bed. Uh, although that stuff does work fairly well as far as adhesion goes, it typically doesn't last all that long and normally things stick too well, so it's very easy to damage that surface. And with this glass surface, you're going to have a much more difficult time uh, damaging that. As far as bed leveling goes, it does use manual bed leveling using four big leveling uh, knobs on the underside of the bed. However, Creality does have a BL Touch upgrade kit available for this printer, and there are mounting holes on the hot end or X carriage assembly where you can mount a BL Touch if you do want to add auto bed leveling. The Ender 3 V2 is a 24 volt system being powered by a meanwhile power supply. One thing that this printer did get over the previous versions is an upgrade to a 32-bit board running Marlin and it also does have Trinamic drivers. The board also has a input for that BL Touch if you do want to add it as well as a filament runout sensor, but both the BL Touch and the filament runout sensor are things you would have to add after the fact and they do not come stock on the V2. Those Trinamic drivers are going to mean that the motion is going to be a lot quieter on the uh, V2 versus the standard Ender 3, and because it's got the whole 32-bit with Marlin 2.0, one cool thing is that you can upgrade the main board over uh, the micro SD card, which makes it a lot easier than having to do the whole installing bootloader and then flashing over Marlin. So if you do decide you want to upgrade or add on the filament runout sensor or the BL Touch, it shouldn't be so difficult to do so. For printing, there is power loss recovery, and you do have the options to print over a micro USB cable connected to a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint or uh, to your computer. You've also got the option to print over a micro SD card similar to on the V1. They did upgrade the screen from the standard RepRap style to a larger color screen, but it still does not have touchscreen built into it. The V2 uses a Bowden style extruder and looks identical to the original Ender 3. And although the hot end fan housing is clearly different, when I removed the cover and revealed the same non all metal hot end design as on the original V1. With the V2, they did add belt tensioners to the X axis and the Y axis, a little storage compartment underneath the printer if you wanna add things like spare nozzles or tools or your clippers that I can never seem to find. You can store them actually in the printer so they're always there. And they did add a, a little kind of rotary or a knob that you can put on the extruder which is supposed to help you with loading or unloading filament. As far as movement goes, the V2 is using the same style V-slot wheels and they did stick with the wider Y-axis. So on the original Ender 3, the Y-axis was using a thinner 2040 aluminum extrusion profile. And then on the Ender 3 Pro, they upgraded that to a 4040, which was supposed to make it a bit stiffer and remove any potential wobble. Well, they stuck with that on this machine as well, which is something that I think was a good call. Uh, and they also move the power supply from on the original Ender 3 from being on the back right of the machine uh, to being under the machine. And I actually really like that. And it feels like having that weight underneath the machine makes it a bit, uh, a bit more sturdier and that the, the weight distribution is a bit more balanced. 
I did want to pop the hood on this printer so that you could take a quick look inside. This required removing one screw from the top of the printer and a few screws from the bottom. Although on the original Ender 3, you can access the main board from the top of the machine, I feel like I prefer it being on the bottom because once you take that panel off, it seems like it's much easier to get your hand in there if you're trying to repair something or upgrade something. So I do like the placement of the board being accessible from the bottom um, more so than actually the top on the original Ender 3s. On the inside, you will find the 32-bit main board. And aside from that, there is one exhaust fan on the housing to help with removing heat. The meanwhile power supply was in a separate compartment below the printer, which would have required further disassembly as well as cutting some cable ties that were holding cables in place. So in this case, I opted to call it here as far as the disassembly goes. The Ender 3 V2 did come packed very nicely. There was a uh, printed paper guide for how to assemble the printer as well as a PDF version that came on the included micro SD card. All the screws were individually labeled, which was something that I was very appreciative of. And overall assembling this machine felt very similar to any of the installs I've done on the original Ender 3s with just some slight changes. For whatever reasoning, the only part that actually stumped me was adding the X-axis belt tensioner. Looking at the illustration and looking at what was in front of me, I don't know if I was tired or what the cause was, but I just couldn't figure out what it was trying to say or which screw needed to go through. So when I plugged in the micro SD card, I was really happy to see that Creality had actually included a pretty good video install guide or video assembly guide. And so I only use that to reference the um, x-axis belt tensioner and kind of how to pop the screw through and the belt through it but that was something that was much uh, like very appreciated as well and it's something that I've seen a couple of manufacturers start to do and I do think that that is great that um, yes you know there are individuals like myself and many others out there that do make install guides for these printers or how to assemble but having the manufacturer provide you with a paper copy a pdf copy and a video really checks all the boxes and is awesome for someone that hasn't assembled a 3D printer before, I would say that you can expect the assembly of the V2 to take anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour roughly. Once the assembly was complete, I grabbed a piece of paper and went around and leveled the four corners of the bed to make sure that it was ready to go. And like many other 3D printers in the budget sector that don't come with any uh, material to print with, the Ender 3 V2 is really no exception. They give you a tiny little strand of some white PLA, but it's really not enough to do much of anything except for maybe the test file that comes on the uh, micro SD card. So definitely make sure to order a spool of filament or you might be really disappointed when you build the printer and don't really have enough filament to print. So uh, I loaded up the orange Matter Hackers build series, uh, build series PLA that I've been using and I browsed the micro SD card and discovered there was a file called cat and a file called dog. I opted to print the cat file, which was the kind of standard lucky cat and uh, that's been on Creality printers as a test file for as long as I can remember. Uh, it was definitely sliced at a very fine resolution of probably around 100 microns and it did take a few hours to complete, but the end result was a really nice looking print. And uh, again, I was able to see that everything on this machine was working and working as it should be. Once the test print was done, I was ready to slice my own files. I hopped over to Cura and went to add the Ender 3 V2 uh, printer to the printer options and saw that they didn't actually have it baked in. So I took the included micro SD card, plugged it in, installed it. It was essentially Cura as well, but it was branded as Creality Cura. And when I went to add printers, I also saw that even with the micro SD card included with this machine, there was no Ender 3 V2 profile. Luckily, since the extrusion and the hot end are, again, the identical, uh, as far as I can tell, identical to each other, and the build volume is the exact same, I was able to just hop over to Cura then and create a, uh, add, add the Ender 3 as a printer to the slicer and then just name it V2 for the V2. But I do think that for someone that is new to 3D printing that doesn't know this and just buys this printer and says, hey, like I have the V2 and there's no profile for the V2, that could be a bit confusing. So I, I do think that it would be cool if Creality could add a V2 profile, even if it is the same as the V1, or at least put Ender 3, you know, dash V2, just, I can see this being confusing for someone getting started, but again, if you do get the Ender 3 V2, just use the Ender 3 standard profile because it's essentially the same machine as far as extrusion, hot end, and build volume goes. Once I had that profile set up, I actually used the Ender 3 V2 for last week's video on adaptive layers where I printed out these four different vacuum hose attachments using variable layer height uh, based off of the 
parameters that I said. If you didn't see that video, maybe you wanna check that out. I'll place links in the description to that. But those were about an hour and a half to two hours a piece. And again, I printed four of them. They all turned out great. And I did end up adding a little bit of glue stick to the glass uh, bed. With PLA and that kind of ultra base style bed, you don't necessarily have to, but it helps give it a little extra bite. And so in my opinion, you might as well just add a thin layer of glue stick to the uh, bed for that extra adhesion. Once completed, I turned my attention to something much more detailed and much bigger. Chelsea over at Chaos Core Tech announced uh, that they had released their Godzilla model, which I had seen for some time over on Thanks 3D for free for everyone to be able to download, not just their Patreon supporters, or I don't know if they had it as a paid model as well, they might have, but I was stoked because I'd seen that model and um, when I was testing out this machine, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to print. So I saw that and was like, yes, this is a awesome model. It's a large model, it's a detailed model. So I went ahead and downloaded that. And again, links to all the things I talk about or print will be in the description if you wanna check them out as well. So I downloaded that. I imported it into Cura. I sliced it at 200 microns. The default profile had a printing speed of 50 millimeters a second, which is pretty conservative, but I decided to just stick with that to allow the printer to run, you know, kind of how it was optimized within the slicer. And I hit go, and this was a 30 hour print that took a, took a long time. I mean, that was a pretty dang big print to go from an hour and a half to two hours to a 30 hour print, but I figured what the hell, let's just go with it. and. It turned out awesome. The only two issues that this print had were not uh, not due to the machine itself, but I was printing from a, I think it was a two and a half kilogram roll of material. And twice throughout the printing, the little um, filament spool holder that I had for this spool actually locked up. And so the spool fell off. And one time it scared the crap out of me. It was pretty late at night, but um, both, both of the times where it fell off, there is a little bit of either like shift slash under extrusion on that layer, unfortunately, but because the model is so detailed, you can't really see it all that well. And then the second thing is, is when I was getting footage of, uh, for recording or for this video, I was moving Godzilla and I might've dropped Godzilla and taken off one of his toes. Um, both of those things were not the fault of the printer. Both of those things were my fault or the situation surrounding it, but this, this printer did an absolutely awesome awesome job. And again, had I not dropped it, had I used a spool that wasn't so big that had fallen over, it would have been perfect. And so regardless, I still think this was a very successful print and I was incredibly pleased with it. And while I was printing Godzilla out, Chelsea at Chaos Cortec had to announce that she had printed or had modeled a vision, uh, vision model. So I just finished watching uh, WandaVision like a week ago or maybe two weeks ago now, whenever the last Friday was. And uh, me and Aaron loved that show. We, we were every single Friday super excited to see it. And so I saw this awesome bust of Vision and I hadn't printed out a bust in a long time. So I said, absolutely, we're gonna print this. And there was two pieces. One part was the actual character model or the character bust. And the second piece was a stand. And for this, I actually busted out my poly, uh, poly alchemy elixir filament, which I got for my birthday like a year and a half ago. And I only take it out for uh, special prints. So uh, this print in total, I think the bust itself was somewhere around eight to 12 hours and the base was maybe six-ish six -ish hours, but man, did it turn out awesome. And Erin told me that this is probably one of her top prints that I've done. I, I just, it turned out amazing. Chelsea did such a great job of modeling this and the Ender 3 V2 did a fantastic job of capturing all the details. I used the exact same settings as on Nope, that's not true. I didn't use the exact same settings. I lowered the speed because uh, for Elixir, since it is a silky material and it kind of extrudes strangely, um, I did lower the speeds down to either 30 or 40 millimeters a second. So it was a pretty slow print. But other than that, as far as the cooling and the temps go, I believe I left those all the same. But regardless, I mean, this print turned out absolutely awesome. And the V2, I was so stoked on how the PLA parts were turning out. Once done with those prints, I decided to swap out for some PETG. I found a coin car cup organizer thing over on Thingiverse that I thought would be uh, a great functional print, a uh, great use of PTG so that way it won't melt in the car and uh, a pretty big print at I think roughly 20-ish hours to really show um, you know how, how it handles PTG. So I brought that over to Kira, I sliced it up, I kept most of the settings the same but I, I changed the hot end to 240 Celsius, bed to 70 C. The cooling, the fan cooling was at, uh, 50% and I think that was all that I changed. And 
The print turned out great. Um, there was a little bit of stringiness that I think I can adjust or I can correct if I want to spend some time tweaking the retraction or even possibly slightly uh, lowering the printing temperature or even possibly drying out this material. This PTG is probably a year old and yes, I'm in Southern California where it's quite dry, but I'd be lying if I said that I stored it in a closed bag. So that certainly could have an effect on it. But for the sake of testing out this machine's ability to print PTG, it, it did a great job. This model is awesome. And I think that there's, uh, I don't think anyone would say that it's not a good print that came off of it. So in, in all honesty, because of the fact that the Ender 3 V2 is essentially using the same hot end extruder setup as the Ender 3 original that I've got, you know, thousands of hours of print time with at this point, and I've used them stock a, a lot. I, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really concerned about the quality of what this machine was going to be able to output. Yes, it's running a 32-bit board, which is different than the 8-bit, but my Ender 3s have also been running a 32-bit board for a while, so I wasn't surprised to see that the Ender 3 V2 was able to output some really awesome looking prints, even just stock assembled out of the box. All right, now that we've covered the technical specs, kind of the setup and what some of the prints have looked like coming off of this, I wanted to talk about some of the things that I really like about the Ender 3 V2 and as well as some of the things that I am not so crazy about. So the things that I really like are the 32-bit board with the Trinamic drivers. I think that is a great upgrade as well as the new bed, uh, the glass or the, I can't think of the name they call it, but the ultra base style glass bed, I think is a big upgrade or at least a upgrade over what was previously coming on the original Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro. As far as the X and Y belt tensioner, the storage underneath and the little knob, these are all things that actually the community had made available over on Thingiverse for you to download and easily install yourself. But with that being said, I'm not disappointed to see them implemented. A lot of companies take things that the community likes and do implement them into their machine. So clearly there was a demand for these, these different things and they decided, Hey, instead of you having to do these upgrades, we'll just, we'll just have it. Well, you know, we'll do them for you. So I do like that they implemented those things, having especially the X and Y belt tensioner, I would describe as probably the most useful, but even the storage is nice and the knob. So those are all positive things that Creality did with the Ender 3 V2. So with the Ender 3 V2, there's really only two things that I'm just not a fan of. Of. And the first one is, and I feel like I talk about this one all the time in, with different machines, but it's the fans. So with the V2, they added a 32-bit board and Trinamic drivers, and the motion is definitely a lot quieter. I can hardly hear, I don't know if I can hear really any of the motion or movement of the machine like I could on the uh, original Ender 3 before upgrading it, but the fans are just too loud. And it actually sounds like, I'm almost positive that the fans on the V2 are louder than the fans that came on the original Ender 3, which is just, it's disappointing to me that, you know, again, this machine has the potential to be really quiet, yet they have these fans that are either, you know, low cost, or I don't know if they're just running too high or, or the bearings are, you know, again, the not good bearings or what the real issue is, but it's just loud. It's, it's definitely one of the louder um, fan setups that I've heard on a machine in the last couple of machines that I've reviewed. And for a lot of people that might not be a big deal, especially if you've got the printer in a separate space, for me, with it being so centrally located, this is something I take into consideration. And again, I do think it's quite loud. Yes, you can certainly upgrade to Noctua fans. And um, that is something that a lot of people do, but you know, again, that is a mod and that's something that not everybody does want to do. So worth noting the fans on this thing are, are definitely louder than I'd like. The second thing is related to the screen on it. So I don't necessarily think that the screen on it is, is worse per se than the original RepRap style screen that, you know, a lot of us are so used to, but I'm just, I wish they had added a touch screen as well. I understand not everybody likes touch screens and, um, you know, they could do something similar to like BQ has with their TFT screens where it's got a rotary knob. So you can, you know, use that if that's what you prefer, or you can use a touch screen, but even the interface on this, this screen looks like it's a touch screen. Like it, the buttons are kind of big, like they'd be a touch screen. So, uh, I really wish they had added that. I hope that they do add that. Um, but if they don't add that, the thing I noticed that I wasn't crazy about as well was when you're actually browsing through the print menu, if you've got things that are starting off with the same name, you can only see because of the rectangle shape, how it's like taller versus wider on this screen, you can only see the very beginning kind of of what you're going to be printing. And I couldn't find any way to have it where, you know, where if you highlight something, you're going to maybe be printing that it scrolls so you can read the whole name of the file. So when I was testing out the adaptive layers, I had named the files all the same thing with just the difference being at the end of the file name, you know, based off the, the parameters I set. And I couldn't tell them apart. I had to basically 
transfer them back over to the computer and name them, you know, one, two, three, four. So that way I can see what that meant. But to me, that's not a good user experience. And it's certainly something that can be easily updated with just a firmware update that makes it where, again, the text is scrolling, but worth noticing or worth mentioning, because to me, that was a bit of an annoyance was, uh, again, interfacing with that screen, not crazy about it. Overall, I had a really great experience with the Ender 3 V2, and I do plan on doing quite a bit more printing with it over the coming weeks and months. My main concern really is when you've got other printers that we've covered recently on the channel, like the BQB1 or the Elegoo Neptune 2, that you're able to get either the same specs or in some instances better specs for less money. That is what is my biggest concern for the success of the Creality Ender 3 V2. If Creality is able to shave some of the cost off of this machine right now, I think I saw it going for $260 to $280. If they're somehow able to drop that down to $220, I think that they will be much better off and um, find themselves in a much more competitive position for people that are wanting to get another budget 3D printer or newcomers that are looking at some of the lower cost 3D printers that are available. If you're currently running a primarily Creality 3D print farm, I can definitely see the appeal of wanting to get the Ender 3 V2, especially because the hot end and the extruder setup and a lot of the machine is using the same components on the Ender 3 original or the Ender 3 Pro. Having all those things be swappable is something that's really nice to have. Also, if you've been looking at the Creality Ender 3, but maybe the, the original one, and maybe you want 32-bit, you want the Trinamic drivers, you know, you want the belt tensioners, and yes, you can certainly upgrade those things. I've done it. I've showed most of those things um, how to do them on the channel, but maybe you don't feel comfortable tinkering or you don't want to do that. Well, then the Ender 3 V2 is a really solid option for you as well. Since the Ender 3 V2 is using so many of the same components as the original Crowdy Ender 3, I feel confident in its ability to continue to work like I did my Ender 3. I've just talked about, you know, my experience with it two or three years later. I think it was two years later, maybe three times flown by, but it is a machine that I have grown to depend upon and it has proven itself time and time again. So again, if you are looking to get a printer and you want to get something that's in the very kind of starting out budget realm, whether you go with the regular Ender 3, whether you go with the Ender 3 V2, you're going to be happy and it just depends on, again, do you want to save a little extra money or do some of these features are some of these features like the board and the glass bed attractive enough that you want to spend the additional money to go with the Ender 3 V2? And this has been my experience with the Creality Ender 3 V2. I do plan on doing quite a bit more printing over the following weeks and months, so I may end up doing an update video uh, if there is enough interest in that. And I also did get a BL Touch Kit for the Creality Ender 3 V2. If you guys are interested in me recording that and showing you guys the process of converting it using the Creality Upgrade Kit for the Ender 3 V2, let me know in the comments down below and I will uh, end up making a video on that for you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you did want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.